This is Competitive Candidates by Lindsay Jones, a TV screenplay, as you've heard, based on a true story. Exterior hospital building. Outside Bayview Hospital, people of all ages troop like ants between the front entrance and the car park. Some stragglers hover in the doorway, lighting one cigarette from another as tired care staff in brightly colored uniforms look on in mute judgment. Steve, in an impeccably pressed suit, strides through the crowds, pivoting around slow moving patients and visitors who mutter under their breath as they dodge out of his way. He marches into a subsection of a revolving door and pushes with force to make it revolve faster. He turns to find an elderly patient in a wheelchair has unsuccessfully joined his subsection and jammed the door to a stop. Steve appraises the patient a moment, then leans over and places his hands on the chair handles, reversing him out of the doorway and back onto the pavement. The revolving door resumes its course, as does Steve, into the bustle of the busy hospital. Admin wing. Three men sit in a row along the corridor of the hospital administration wing, all dressed in suits with briefcases on their laps. Steve walks to a brisk halt at the empty chair beside them. You all here for the interview? The men nod, looking him up and down. Steve lowers his tall, muscular frame into the seat, his spine straight, his eyes quickly roving over the competition, the nearby table, the exits at each end of the corridor, the doors to nearby offices and all corners of the ceiling. Steve checks his watch, his door, jaw clenched. He examines each of the men in turn, their expensive but crumpled suits, their identical briefcases, bright colored socks and their scuffed shoes, which cause his top lip to curl. He proceeds to tap the heel of his highly polished shoe repetitively on the ground. The sound irritating the silence. Yeah, you're nervous, mate. No. Where are you from? Liverpool. <laughs> Scouts are going for a security job. Well, that knocks you out of the competition, mate. <laughs> I'm only kidding. What's your background? 18 years in the army. This scouser has done security for Buckingham Palace, the Tower of London, and four tours of Northern Ireland. What's your security background? Bank or nightclub? Uh, bank. Bank. In Q. The door to a nearby office opens and Mr Bellamy pokes his head out. Gentlemen, please do come in. Behind a desk sits Miss Kemp and Miss Marshall. They smile warmly at the men who, upon discovering a lack of chairs, stand awkwardly before them. Thank you for applying to be a part of our hospital security team. It's a sad sign of our times, but I'm afraid we've reached a point where our staff encounter regular abuse and threatening behaviour. We have an on-call policeman, but the staff often require immediate assistance. What we'd like, uh, what we would like, gentlemen, is for you to go away and prepare a presentation on how you would improve security for our staff and patients. I hope an hour is sufficient. It can be a PowerPoint presentation if you like. We do love a good slideshow. Have you all brought your laptops? <laughs> all except Steve nod and lift their briefcases a touch higher. Good, good. One hour, gents. The candidates file out, flop into their respective seats and take out their laptops. Steve runs his hands through his short cropped hair, grinds his teeth and then slowly retreats down the corridor. The candidates exchange glances and shake their heads, oblivious as Steve darts into the next office, the name Mr Bellamy above the door. Mr Bellamy's office, he quietly pushes the door shut behind him and scans the room. The office is cluttered with paperwork, books, files, and several, several discarded jackets. Steve, however, zones in on a laptop on the desk, which is open, and the home screen unlocked. Voices in the corridor cause him to hesitate, and he sinks down behind the desk. The voices disappear a moment later. Steve emerges from Mr Bellamy's office with a clipboard in his hand and a curious bulge under his suit jacket. He marches towards the fire escape and exits the administration corridor. Steve leans against a wall and waits, his eyes set firmly on the door sign posted Security Lodge. As one security officer exits the lodge, Steve approaches him. Hiya, mate. Is Barry in there? No, Barry. It's only me and Keeley. I don't know a Barry. My mistake. 
Steve backs away and watches the security officer set off on patrol. He then returns to the security lodge and knocks furiously. Hey, uh, are you Keeley? There's a, a fight in A&E. Uh, Doctor, what's his face needs you to break it up quick? Oh, nothing's come through on my radio. Keeley checks her radio, pressing buttons and twiddling dials. What are you waiting for? The, the bloke could be dead by now. Get a move on. Steve holds the door ajar as Keeley, less than happy to be ordered about, makes towards the A&E department. Steve enters the security lodge and emerges a moment later with a lanyard and staff ID badge around his neck. Steve walks unchallenged along the corridor until he reaches a set of double doors. The room is signposted Mortuary. He looks about himself and pushes against the door. Locked. He backs up, considering his options, when a porter opens the door from the inside. She looks Steve up and down and then squints at his security badge. Your badge not working? Nine. It's function eight, nicked. Uh, okay, uh, here you go. The porter holds the door open for Steve, allowing him access inside, then sets off down the corridor. Steve walks towards a large metal trolley in the centre of the room. A sheet covers a body-shaped lump, and Steve shudders as he approaches. Sorry, mate. Nothing personal. Steve checks his, watch, checks his watch and marches towards an area signposted Staff Changing Room. He tries his badge in the swipe access device and tucks loudly when it grants admittance. The changing room has several nursing staff in various stages of undress. Despite the staff exchanging looks of concern, none of them challenge him as he takes a pair of clogs and a white coat from a nearby shelf and leaves. His suit bulging from both pockets, the coat over his arm and the clogs clearly on display, Steve continues unchallenged down the corridor until he reaches a door signposted Medical Records. The door is locked and this time his swipe badge fails to open the door. A, lock, a keypad is on the door besides a doorbell. Steve hesitates over the bell a moment, then presses down hard. A young woman opens the door and peers up at him. Noting her cheeks flush and her hand shooting up to touch her hair, Steve softens his glare into a flirtatious eye meet. Sorry, love. Miss Marshall and HR gave me the call for the door, but I'm totally blanked on it. First day nerves, I suppose. What's your name? Tabitha. Uh, um, Miss Marshall doesn't have access code to this place. Steve shrugs and smiles as Tabitha visibly melts under his gaze. She steps back and allows him entrance. Steve swaggers inside, ignoring the questioning glances from Tabitha and her colleagues. Don't mind me. I'm just here for a file and then I'll be out of your hair. Oh, which file? I can get it for you. It's a patient's notes. I can find it. I don't want to put you out. <laughs> it's not a problem. I can find it for you. Um, uh, name, date of birth, address? The telephone rings. Excuse me, my man. By the time Tabitha puts the phone back down, Steve is nowhere to be seen. Corridor, second floor, Steve checks his watch again and swears under his breath. As he walks, an A4-sized bulge protrudes at his crotch, hindering his ability to march at his usual speed. He spies Keeley thundering down the corridor towards him, barking at her walkie-talkie. Scouser, bloody had to be. I'm on it. Steve chuckles to himself as he darts inside the nearest elevator. Corridor, administration wing, Mr Kemp, sorry, Ms Kemp is showing candidate three out of the door, clapping him on the back, unaware of Steve's presence behind him. Well done. That was a great presentation. We'll be in touch by the end of the day. Any sign of Mr Jones? Who? The Liverpudlian. I'm here. Uh, we've heard that you'd run away, MIA, as your army fellows say. She showed Steve into the office where Miss Marshall and Mr Bellamy sit at a desk. Miss Kemp then takes a seat next to him. OK, Mr Jones, what have you got for us? Do you need a laptop? That's OK, I have one. Yours. Steve takes the laptop from inside his jacket and places it on the desk before him, opens the lid to display the contents delighting in the shock in their faces. I also have uh, medical notes for uh, Mrs. Bartlett, a white coat and a pair of rather stinky clogs from the staff changing room. A uh, clipboard, which I believe is yours too, Mr. Bellamy, judging by the confidential data attached, and a toll tag for a deceased patient named Brendan Shaw. Steve 
we seem to have lost David, named Brendan Shaw, which I'll of course return before I leave. Mr. Bellamy snatches up the laptop and hugs it to his chest. This is outrageous. I wholeheartedly agree. The ease with which I lifted these items is outrageous. Now, you can either call your extremely lax security team to escort me off the premises, or I can walk you through how I did it, where the gaps in security are and how, if I get Keeley's job. Keeley's job isn't in question. Oh, yes, it bloody is. As I was saying, I can demonstrate how I would improve security. So grab your clipboards. I'm taking you on a tour. Now let's start with the white van at the back entrance, currently being loaded with your ATM machine. What? Just a bit of scouse humour. I thought I'd uh, live up to the offensive stereotype for a moment, which when I get the job, we are going to have words about. Let's go. The end.